Good to go. Hey, welcome everyone. We're waiting for uh, a few more council members to uh, to join us here for the for the caucus. So we still got a you know minute or two before we officially start. But um, welcome uh, all task force members. So, Mr. Pichardo, I know you're you're going to be held up here in a little bit, but I, could you do me the pleasure of once we get settled, calling out the uh, attendees? Sure, can. And I'll just note we'll be uh, minus uh, Ms. Doshe and uh, Ms. Farrell this evening. Um, I just made it, Kelly. I was locked into my house for an hour <laughs> with the <laughs> <a> dog. <laughs> glad, glad you could make it. Yeah. You don't have the, that keyless entry thing going on? The battery was dead in my... Uh, Garage control thing, I get yelled at. <laughs> yeah. That's why I got the hood on. <laughs> Glad you made it back in. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure to see you. Okay, good, every, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday, December 30th uh, caucus at the Albany Common Council. Uh, it's our work session. Um, Mr. Pichardo, will you just call out the, the folks that are- Yes, here, so here. present with us so far um, and entering now, um, Council Member Ballerin, Councilman Flynn, Councilman Conti, Councilman Hoey, um, President Pro Tem Kelly Kimbrough, Councilman O'Brien, um, Councilman Anani um, and Councilman Iago, um, myself, um, J.R. Pichardo, and Michelle Andre, senior legislative aide, are present as staff. Thank you. And I'd also uh, like to say welcome to the newly minted uh, Violence Task Force uh, members. Uh, when we get a little further along, I'll let you all introduce yourself and just say a couple of quick words. Um, so, and what we usually do is we review our agenda for our upcoming meeting and, and discuss that and then, uh, and then take care of other business. So uh, with that being said, um, going over and, and getting into our agenda for our upcoming January 4th meeting, uh, initially under approval of minutes from a previous meeting, we will have our December 21st of 2020 Common Council meeting. I'll offer those minutes for approval. And then next, uh, we have a, a, a scheduled public hearing on ordinance uh, 44 122 that's the ordinance authorizing and directing the closing of Scott Street for the 76 project. We'll be having that public hearing. And then on to local laws held. Uh, we, we have... Kelly, I, miss, I think Mr. Conti had a question on the ordinance. Okay. Um, 
So this is part of the 76 project? Correct. All right, and so this was presumably discussed also in the planning committee as part of their discussion of the, uh, the rezone? No, this this um, this was initially discussed that they would be closing it. We didn't get into the details of the selling of the street just yet. That we were waiting for valuations and um, the various departments from the administration to look into that. All right. So what we're this hearing is on the actual closing. It's not the sale. No, this is just the closing. There's another ordinance that's right after it. That is the sale as well. Okay. Um, I guess my question was since this was all part of the, the, the closure was part of the project and the discussion. Um, is there, I mean, it, it, if there's no objection, you could possibly pass it on Monday as opposed to having rediscussion, but whatever. If you still have to do the, uh, the sale part, then it doesn't make any difference. Never mind. Okay. Thank you uh, for that, uh, Mr. Mr. Conti. Okay, uh, local laws. So on, on our active calendar, we have local law G of 2018 that uh, Mr. Anani Mr. asked that it be, uh, to have it uh, moved out of uh, release from committee. And uh, we had a, a decent discussion uh, at our uh, last meeting uh, around the issue. Uh, but after speaking uh, with the chair of planning and having some discussion with other members, I, I'm going to opt on to have it go through the committee process. Uh, it's, it's a local law. We, we should discuss it in committee. And uh, we, we haven't touched this thing in a, a many moons. So uh, it will be going to the planning committee. And I know you want to say something, Mr. Nani. So, uh, you, you, can you hear me? I, yeah, um, I'm just curious. So, so, when can an individual discharge? Just for point of information, just when can an individual discharge a piece of legislation out of committee? And mm -hmm. with your recommendation that you're given, is that in your power to do so, or are you just giving your opinion about how you feel about my legislation? No, it is in, in my power to to send it to committee to to have it go through the committee process. Gotcha. So even though I discharge it, would they have to be a vote come Monday on it going back to committee, or it's not discharged? You you, you gave it's not discharged. You gave you notice yep. that you intended to. And and I made a lot of assumptions going into you know from the point where you requested it of me. I assumed you had talked to the chair. Of planning, and you hadn't, and I, I, I made the assumption and go and didn't go back through to make sure that it was entertained and discussed in committee. Um, so, this is my way. Of I'm just, I'm just really correcting, confused. My, correcting my mistake. This is a way. Yeah, of, I'm just really confused um, because Michael Bryant discharged a piece of legislation, and I'm not sure if there was a similar discussion with the chair. Uh, clearly, it was delayed. So, I just want to know, just for future preference, like just actions moving forward. I still want to discharge it come Monday. I'm going to ask for it to be discharged. I think this is clear. When it comes to digital okay. divide here in our city, it exists and individuals, this has been on the, on the agenda since 2018. Members, if they were really serious about addressing a digital divide, this conversation would have been had. There would have been emails to the sponsor saying that, hey, Awusu, I know there's something that you're passionate about. This is how we can move forward. It has to take a discharge for now. Individuals want to take uh, action on something that's near and dear. We look at what's happening in the pandemic where 40% of residents in the city of Albany don't have access to the internet. We don't have time to wait. And I feel like what we're doing right now is setting our families here back uh, by not taking action. Um, so- uh, Okay, it, thank you. I, thank you very much for that, Mr. Anani. It is going through the committee process and not being released from committee, no matter what you say. Um, and again, it's from 2018. We all agree that th this is a pressing issue, but passing this right now, even if we pass it in, in, in a couple of days, it's, it's not gonna get us to where we need to be on this. This is the, the end all the be all. It's not about, uh, about this piece of legislation. 
I'm just confused about. I mean, I really don't understand Mr. what you're saying right now. Um, okay, 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 again, I can, let someone else talk, Mr. Anani. Yes, yeah. yeah. Can can we also join this discussion with an update as to where we are with Spectrum or whatever other internet provider we want to uh, contract with? Uh, to, yeah. It seems to me the two issues are kind of joined, and it'd be nice <clears throat> kind of join them together uh, yeah. because our contract is either expired or is about to. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And I've spoken to the administration about this piece of bill, uh, legislation, and they seem like they're okay with it. Um, but I, I guess Kathy said she was going to follow up with the administration because God forbid we pass anything without speaking to the administration first. Um, but yeah, so I've spoken to my, uh, the staff. Um, they're okay with it. I think some of the concerns they have is looking for members who want to be part of um, the commission. Okay, Awusu. I, I just want to say that it, it is not up to us to reach out to you regarding your legislation. It yeah. is your responsibility to reach out to the chairs of the committee if you want a committee meeting. And, you know, it actually does make sense to talk to administration and get their feedback on legislation that's being proposed because they're the ones who are going to have to institute it. So whether you agree with them or not, it is still good to get their input. And this is the first I'm hearing, um, you know, what you're saying that you did reach out to them and you did have conversations. I mean, this is your job to reach out to the, the committee chair and, you know, to discharge the legislation. It's just a very bad precedent to set. This is not the first time, Kathy. I believe Michael Bryant discharged it out of your committee because I don't know what's going on in the planning committee, but this is not the first discharge that's going out of your committee. Yeah. This okay, is the what second. Is, what yeah, is, been, excuse they, me, excuse oh, oh, okay, me. Hold up. One, uh, let me finish. One of the things I said to Kelly is that I'm happy to have this conversation with you. I don't think it needs to happen here at caucus. Uh, if you have some concerns about the way the planning committee or myself is handling things, let's talk about it. I'm happy to do that. And I just want to share that with everyone. I am, you know, if you have concerns about anything that's going on in the planning committee, you can reach out to me anytime and I will have that conversation. Yeah, and, and, and just for point of clarification, as I recall the time I did it, I, I remember that I had gone to a meeting at Kathy's committee where my legislation was on there. And um, every, every piece of legislation, every, everybody there agreed to hold it indefinitely. The triggering point came when the plan, the board. zoning board made a bizarre decision, making necessity of pulling, you know, the stuff that we had mutually agreed to to just let sit. That necessitated pulling it out quickly, and that's how I remember it, uh, Kathy. I think. Well, you know, right, Mike. Right, uh, uh, right, it's not, not like it, you know. I, I know, Kelly, I know you don't want to Let's spend much on. more time right. on this. Um, and uh, yes, that was a, that it's true, Owusu, that happened, but it's very bad precedent to be setting as far as discharging legislation. Ideally, you want it to go through committee. You want the input of your colleagues on these on this legislation. It's a way of educating them about an issue and also, you know, uh, building consensus. So that's all I'm going to say right now. Okay. Okay, and, th and just lastly, every piece of legislation, I think there have only been two or three um, that have been discharged like that. I think I did it twice and maybe Richard did it once. once. But, but it, I'll, I'll get you, Joe, in a minute. But they all went to committee, got discussed in committee, and got held up for some reason. This piece of legislation has not darkened Kelly, the Kelly, that's false. It did go to committee. It did go to committee, Kelly. We did discuss this. This is not the first I, time. And I no. could I, I, no, it never went to committee. Okay, I will send you the minutes from uh, the planning committee during that discussion. I remember um, Chris Spencer was there. It was 2018. I will send you the minutes. That's fine. Uh, that's uh, your interpretation. Maybe there's a misunderstanding, but I will send it to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nani. Mr. Igo. Uh, Kelly, I'd just like to make a couple recommendations. I'm not sure if everybody has ever received the rules of the council. I don't believe they have, or some of them maybe have probably. They, have. they have. They have. Yeah, they yeah. Michelle, have. You, can, you, can you just reset? I'll, I'll reset it out. Yes. And uh, that's good, I think. 
Another thing, we have an agenda. Some things have been sitting on two or three years. So now we're in the last year. I don't want to hold things that popping up, reporting things out of committee. Let's get the committee system going. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay. So that local law will, will not be addressed and it's going to uh, planning. Uh, okay. Uh, next, under ordinances introduced, um, it's uh, 111 21. I, before you do that, I think you have local law I that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know what? So uh, thank you very much. Got a little distracted. Local law I, yes, it was aging, and uh, we will be uh, uh, voting on that on, at our next meeting. That's local law I. It's, three, it's uh, agenda item three under. Uh, is it four? Local law I. We'll be voting on that. Okay, next on the ordinances, uh, we have uh, 11121 uh, that deals with the uh, residential parking permit system. Mr. Conte, you care to say a few words? About um, sure. So this is the deals with permit parking. Um, so when we adopted the permit parking zones, um, the boundaries, what we might call the meets and bounds and the street designations back in 2012, we did it by a resolution, um, which has a tendency to get lost. Um, so what this does is simply takes exactly uh, the language from the resolution that we adopted back in 2012, which delineated the boundaries and the streets that were designated and would put them in the city code so that there's a firm foundation in the code. Uh, as we move forward, uh, and possibly make amendments to this going forward, or depending if we get the home rule legislation we want to get, uh, that we can, uh, we have this as a base to work from. Because right now, these resolutions uh, get lost. And probably initially, it should have been done this way to begin with, but this is just corrects that and puts it in code. But it's the same language from the resolution, resolu those resolutions are part of the supporting memo I sent okay. out, same language uh, as we adopted in 2012. Uh, so these are the boundaries that are currently in effect, makes no changes at all, simply moves it into city code. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Bauer. I know we're looking to expand yep. those boundaries. So shouldn't we look to do that in, in, in this piece? Uh, no, because we don't, we don't have all the authority we want right now uh, because we're trying to do uh, beyond th the area that you're concerned about, Alfredo, but there's some other areas as well. Uh, so this would actually create the base that we then can work off of uh, if we get the authority in terms of the home rule legislation. So all I want to do right now is put the base in city code uh, so that we have something very clear that we can work off of. Okay. Can we get together sometime, maybe next week, get the group together again to discuss? Uh, how that yeah, yeah. And I want to follow up with um, our, you know, I know that this week is kind of like everybody is focusing on other things. Uh, but I do want to follow up with the, uh, the contact I had with our legislative reps in terms of moving forward on trying to get that home rule bill, bill back in again so we can move on with that as soon as possible. Okay, and uh, we'll be referring that to planning. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever. As I say, it is the it's the same language we already adopted, so there's no change um, in terms of as far as this ordinance goes. Okay. You know. Okay, and, and our, just if members are comfortable with, with moving forward, I mean, it it's not a pass for Monday because it has to age, but it's it is the same language. Okay, all right. So yeah, those those resolutions are a part of the uh, supporting documentation. So if members could review those, well, yeah, we'll just uh, let it age and then and then move it at this point. So it'll be an intro on Monday. Okay, next on to uh, resolutions introduced. Um, by uh, Mr. Anani, uh, 
uh, resolution 111 21 uh, uh, one, excuse me 11 21r uh relating to a commission to study the changes to the flag. So, so again, uh, this commission, this is for us to authorize the mayor to form a commission to, to, to do this work. At this point, we do not um, need to authorize and can't authorize the mayor. Uh, so I, 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 I wanna hear from you, Mr. Anani, but I'm not sure this is necessary. Go, go ahead, Mr. Anani. Well, again, thank you for your opinion. Um, you're not sure if it's necessary. Okay, so um, the flag changing the flag that's necessary in a discussion that should be had. But the thing is, you should what, be saying is that it's going to committee. It's not just you don't think something is necessary to authorize. If you want to send it to committee, you could do that. Okay, but to say that you don't think something is necessary. Well, I took the time to write this legislation and to say that it's not, it's not necessary is essentially disrespectful. And, uh, you know, to me specifically, uh, this is something that, uh, I mean, you're just being ridiculous. Sure, not my intention. It's, 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 it's fine, it's fine, Kelly, you've, you've done enough today. Um, anyway, on, <laughs> on the resolution, uh, there's been many calls um, to uh, particularly marginalized communities that feel that this flag, it, when you look at the basis of the uh, of the Albany's flag, is a flag of the Netherlands, which has been co-opted by white supremacy groups. Uh, many residents have noted the uh, inherent hypocrisy of a city, you know, talking about equity and diversity and promoting our diversity when our flag resembles uh, white supremacy. Um, you know, and this is not new. Many uh, municipalities all up across our country have. Uh, change their flag. Uh, this flag has been around for the past 111 years. Uh, there's been a growing movement to just have a, a discussion about, you know, what our flag represent and does it represent uh, the rich diversity that exists here in the city of Albany. So uh, it's in that vein that I felt that it was important to uh, put a committee together to do a study to figure out what are some of the potential flags that we can make uh, the mayor is already making some improvements as it relates to the Albany seal. You're not seeing it on the mayor's letterhead anymore as much. And uh, you will see uh, a new symbol, which I think that shows the pride in our city. And it was done by uh, the College of St. Rose uh, students. So maybe that's something that we could also look at where we can have our anchor institutions look at uh, something that resembles pride and the rich diversity that exists here in the city of Albany. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nani, and and uh, don't uh, misunderstand me by saying it's not necessary. I, obviously, changing the flag is necessary, but my point was that you could simply have a conversation with the mayor and get something like this going without without doing the resolution to to do that. So uh, we'll refer to council uh, operations. Right? Thank you. Um, Next uh, resolution 21121R by Miss Love. Is Miss Love on? Okay, I, I don't see it, but it's a, it's a resolution a call on uh, New York State Legislature to enact uh, legislation that would allow absentee ballots to be counted earlier. Uh, again, um, that she's not here. There'll be a referral to Council Operations. Also, I think the resolution could use uh, uh, a little more language in it, like uh, addressing fraud, and it, it's it's kind of basic. And I think if we talked about it in in the committee, we could probably extend it and come up with some some more language that's that'll strengthen it. So that's a referral to council operations. Also, uh, next resolution three. Did someone have a hand up? I'm looking down. Did you have your hand up, Mr. Conte? No, no, I just want to know. I do have a couple of items in operations. And I was thinking about trying to pull together a meeting soon. Uh, so assuming the sponsors want to move these and there's some other items in there, uh, I'll be looking at some potential dates that we can. Uh, right. OK, thank but, you. Yeah. And, and again, I'll, I'll, it, talk, I'll, I'll coordinate with Michelle later on. Right. OK. And, and again, I, I don't see these being lengthy discussions. 
uh, on these two resolutions, but uh, just getting together to put some more information in there and, and make it better. Uh, next, resolution uh, 31121. Um, okay, so uh, uh, authorizing the implementation of real property tax law section 111, excuse me, 1011A in the city of Albany. Uh, it's it's uh, speeding up foreclosures. Uh, finance, it'll be a referral. Uh oh, I did something. I lost everything. A referral to, to uh, finance. Um, and uh, again, it's, it's a resolution. And if members are comfortable, alternatively, we could uh, move ahead with it uh, because it's, it's, it's not. Uh, you know, complicated issue. And Mr. Williams, you care to uh, comment on that resolution? Um, yeah, without getting too far in the weeds uh, as far as how the RPTL wor works in this regard, uh, it is something that um, my colleague Rob McGee and I, I believe JR as well have been working with the county to get this passed. Um, <clears throat> it's an optional thing, but it will help the county speed up the foreclosure process uh, so that it can take more like a year rather than multiple years as it frequently often does uh, at present. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And then it's to speed up the process basically. Uh, okay. So members, you, you, uh, you know, I started out thinking referral to, to uh, to finance, but I, I don't, I'm not sure that it needs to go there. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be voting on it on uh, Monday. Okay. Uh, one question. If you look at the uh, the fifth, whereas one, two, three, four, five, there's reference to the Albany County Ticks District. Is that, or is that meant to be tax district? It's probably meant to be tax district. I apologize for the typo there. <laughs> Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Conti. So we'll be we'll be moving that. And uh, next, uh, any hands? No, no. Next resolution is four eleven twenty one. Uh, it's a resolution of the Common Council uh, reappointing Francis Cosgrove to the Board of Re Assessment Review. Uh, to reappointment, uh, he he would in the normal course go to planning for his first. Uh, Kathy, have you been in contact with Mr. Cosgrove or, or has he been before you to, to kind of check in? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you comfortable with just, do uh, you need him? No, I mean, he's, he's, he has been serving you know? for uh, quite a few years now and he gave a, a really terrific uh, interview and, and we had a great discussion about um, the work that he's been doing on the uh, Board of Assessment. And I think everyone on the planning committee felt very comfortable about reappointing him. Okay, we'll be passed on, on Monday for Mr. Cosgrove. Um, that is it for the regular agenda. And so now we'll move on to just uh, getting uh, introductions just from the folks uh, that we chose for the Violence Prevention Task Force. Obviously, violence has been an issue. This, it's always an issue, but this year in particular, and uh, so much so that we, you know, we, we felt the need to put together this task force to, to discuss the issues and try to uh, come up with some solutions. It's also a part of our equity agenda. So what, what I would like to do is just uh, have members introduce themselves and uh, and um, yeah, just introductions should suffice. So uh, hopefully my screen doesn't change. We'll start with Mr. Pratt. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is John Pratt. I've li lived in Albany off and on since 1985. Um, I have 20 plus years in uh, law enforcement, 
spent about six years in the military and uh, live here in the city of Albany. Okay. Happy to be Thank here. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your willingness to serve. What? And again, I'm just going by this screen that keeps moving. Uh, Mr. Mancini. Hello. So um, I'm Joe Mancini. Currently, I'm the director at the Capital District Juvenile Security Detention Facility. Um, started here in July. I retired from government service February of 2019. Um, spent most of my career in Schenectady County Probation. I was um, worked, most of my work has been in the juvenile justice system. I've been very active in creating programs where um, that community-based programs that remove the need to send a youth to institutions. And, you know, I've had a real passion for working with communities. I did that for 30 years at different levels. I was deputy commissioner of the Department of uh, Social Services in Schenectady County and also the director of probation. And we did some really unique programming there. Actually, I did receive a grant from the Department of Criminal Justice Services, the Juvenile Crime Reduction um, grant. So we did some crime mapping and programming around hotspots in the city of Schenectady. Um, that was quite a few years ago and to address juvenile crime. I was on a governor's commission to raise the age of um, criminal responsibility, which I think was really, really important um, for the state and for our youth. Um, that it went from 16 to 18, which I think has been an enormous and a wonderful policy change for the state and, and you know, provides opportunities for, for serving youth in their communities. Um, then I went to OCFS as an associate commissioner for the Office of Community oh, Partnerships. Oh. And there I designed their aftercare model and did some um, pretty innovative programming, community-based programming um, while I was there and then retired in 2019. Um, my parents weren't doing so well and um, actually my mother passed away this past August. She had Alzheimer's. So I took some time off, but um, I really, you know, I love this work. It's really my um, kind of my passion. And when I saw this opportunity, I applied and hope that I can bring some, um, some of my knowledge and experience that can help with what you guys are up to, if you all are up to it. So it's so important, but yet it's so rewarding, but also very challenging when, when we can come together and come up with some pretty good solutions. So I hope I can contribute some. And that's, that's what, I, you know, what I'd like to you know, see for myself and, and, and bring to the table with you all. Thank you, Mr. Mancini. Uh, I'll add to the introducing yourself, just you know, let us know why you wanted to join the task force. Uh, Mr. Abrahams. Good evening, everyone. I'm Orville Abrahams. I, I know many of you. I have grown up in the city of Albany, uh, started off living in Arbor Hill at Dudley Heights, and my formative years spent down South Pearl Street at uh, Ezra Prentice. I, I love the South End. I consider it uh, a home uh, as I do the entire city. Uh, I've gone to Albany Public Schools, Albany High, went on to uh, graduate from SUNY Albany. So I've been someone who's been intricately involved in this community. I worked for the Housing Authority for a number of years and also the YMCA in Albany. I'm familiar with many, many uh, programs and people in the city. Um, I want to be on this task force because I see myself in a position from my viewpoint and experience and the people that I connect with to be able to help have some empathy and make Albany, uh, not just talk about Albany being a better place, but using my own resources and efforts and my experiences and connections to help Albany to be a better place. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Green. Hi, I'd like to thank the council again for appointing me to this role. Uh, I as well oh, grew up Albany Public Schools, SUNY Albany for my undergraduate degree, and I currently work for the city fire department. Uh, so I firsthand am dealing with some of the violence effects, dealing with some of the effects that this violence has on the different neighborhoods throughout the community. And I've seen the struggle that it has started to put on the different neighborhoods in this community as we work in pretty much every neighborhood. I get sent all around the city still. 
And I've worked in different youth programs, sports programs for youth, as well as adults all over the world, mainly in Albany, though. And I'd really like to bring some different programs with sports and with mentorship to really try to connect all the different neighborhoods as well as the groups and really bring back some neighborhood pride through these neighborhoods that are struggling and really get all the people involved themselves so that we can help bring them success and help them create success on their own as well. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, Ms. Chappelle. Hi, thank you so much. Um, very happy and I wanna thank the Public Safety Committee for recommending me. Um, I currently work for Planned Parenthood, but I've worked for many elected officials in the government for many years and really worked on criminal justice issues. So I'm very excited about this opportunity. I think we can make create a model um, that works with the community and really do some innovative things that I think we have the capacity and the ability to do so. So I'm really excited about this and I really wanna thank everyone. Um, I'm, I think there's the, it's unlimited in terms of what we can accomplish and also really um, work on the mental health issues as well as trauma and dealing with the community and working with them in conjunction to make sure that we're really listening to those that are directly affected and how we can make the whole community much better. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Williams, you're, you're muted. Okay. Um, thank you all. No, no, no. Ms. W Ms. Williams. Okay. Williams. Williams, yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you for accepting me. I'm glad to be here. Uh, my name is Joyce Williams. I'm born and raised here in Albany, right here in Arbor Hill. Uh, I grew up on First Street, so I have lived in Arbor Hill, South End, know a lot about the city. Uh, I um, submitted my application because my nephew was a, a victim of gun violence. He was killed in the Washington Park. He was part of Washington Park murders that happened back in 97. So I always wanted to do something to like help my community because in that situation, nobody won. Four young boys killed him. And so four young boys are doing life Three of them are doing life in prison right now. So and then there's a lot of gun violence going on. So I wanted to see how can I help and growing up in Albany, we had a lot of things to do back in the days, but there's nothing to do. So I'm hoping that I can help bring some of that back, like community centers, uh, activities for the young people, jobs for the young people. Um, what I do now, I work in Albany. I am a substance abuse counselor certified by New York State of Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse. I've been in that field for the last 27 years. I love it. It's my compassion. I've seen you know, how the drugs ravaged my community and people that I grew up with. So my compassion was to try to help and give back and you know, show people that there is another way that they don't have to be out there. And I'm honored to be working for the Homer Perkins Center, who was a, a county legislator who this building is named after. So um, I feel like you know, drug addiction brings about violence, anger, grief. It's, it's an umbrella. It has a lot of issues under that umbrella. So I'm just hoping that I can contribute and find a way to give back and be a team player to help improve um, Albany County. Thank you. Hey, uh, Brother Barry. Okay, thank you. I'm actually shouting out from North Carolina, so I'm not there with you all. Um, internet is really low and poor, so that's why I jumped in. I want to make sure I, oh. I can stay on. <laughs> um, Barry Walston, um, resident of Albany. Um, I have a lot of, there's a lot of intersections with um, those who, my peers who already spoke. And I grew up on 37 Morton Avenue before it became Lincoln Square. Um, also went to school 24 be before it became Toast. And I was also present when um, Mayor Corning was the mayor. So not that I, um, I'm hopefully showing uh, my age, but. <laughs> I've been um, part of the Albany community for a long time. I live in the Pine Hills area. Uh, currently, um, I work for the New York State Department of Health. I'm a social worker by profession with the SUNY Albany undergrad and grad school. My passion around youth development and one of the things that I have in common with, um, with Joe is that I was a probation officer for Albany County back in 1985 and just primarily worked with um, the juvenile, uh, in the juvenile department or unit. But what changed my life in that experience was meeting family court judges who really understood the community, who 
um, understood the relationships uh, about marginalized community. And I lift up Judge um, Anthony Cardona and Beverly Tobin, and uh, for those who remember Judge Cheeseman. But um, my life um, really was changed in those types of interactions, um, being a double minority as a black male and just black um, in a space that often uh, we were overrepresented um, within those systems. I currently work, um, I was part of the Juvenile Community Accountability, I am part of JCAP, but I was the initial part of the Adult Accountability, accountability um, Board. So um, right now, um, JCAP has, uh, there is such an urgent need for volunteers to be part of that process. Um, I think, you know, we're not really even, we're looking at violence. Um, but there's so much happening underground just at an earlier age that we have, we're we really missing. And so my thing is really around intervention and prevention um, and creating some programs. The last thing I mentioned is that I was also part of uh, Albany Service Corps when we talk about really good programs, um, but the Albany Service Corps really served a great um, opportunity for youth who were coming from the city, it gave them projects, um, skills building, but it also gave them some money. And so that investment from the city um, and from the state was a really um, valuable uh, institution. So I'm a, very, I'm a proponent of this service core. Thank you and thank the um, committee for um, having an interview and also accepting me as being part of the um, process, being part of this um, committee. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Joseph. Is that for me, Kelly? So you do uh, have uh, no, Mr. Mr. Donnell Joseph, Mr. Joseph. Okay, Sorry, my Lord. name. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, my name is Donnell Joseph. I am a son of South Central Los Angeles. I grew up in gangs and, and violence. I grew up in the same situation that is facing the city of Albany and a lot of our major cities today. I want the youth to have an opportunity not only to stop the violence, but to have other things that they can look forward to other than have to embrace the negativity of our world. What I want to offer to the committee is what I know could have helped me and helped millions and thousands of other people. The problem we're having, one of the problems that we're having in Albany is what is coming into Albany from other parts of the state. And they're coming up here with this mentality and we have to stop. It. We have to warn of these young people the consequences. We have to get brochures to let them know what a gun, what a case caught with a gun. If you get caught with a 924, this is what the results. If you kill somebody, this is the results. We have to give them something that they can embrace and we have to listen. Because if we don't listen, we could have the best, best programs and they'll just go around and they will learn to play. But until we reach them and the way we reach them, it's gonna be hard because not only is it one way, it's we have to connect with the police. We cannot just do it alone. We have to work with the police. We have to work with the parents. We have to work with the community and we have to be very dedicated with each other. It's not gonna be easy, but together we can do it. And I wanna to get to know every one of the members of the task force because our responsibility is very deep and we have to rely on each other to work with each other, to understand each other, to talk to each other, to share our interests, to share our problems, to share everything that we're working to do. I plan to, to do everything I can. I'm planning to hit the pavement, walk the streets, talk to these youngsters, go to the churches, go to the schools. We have to get the, we can't let the wolves be among the sheep. We have to let our communities where our children will feel safe to go to school, to feel safe to go to college. We need these colleges to also reach back. We need our leaders to also work with us. This is a big thing. We'll lose every time the police are stopping these youngsters now, they're finding guns. They're either getting prepared for a war, they're in a war, and it's not good. 
They know what's happening. And we have to address these murders that happened this summer. We have to have legitimacy with this task force and let them know that we're not playing. And we won't, we have, we can't do crime and don't do time. I don't like to see young people do time, but those murders have to be addressed because if they do not be addressed, the police is not gonna have the respect they're gonna have. This task force is not gonna have the respect they're gonna have. They have the no snitch policy, which I understand, I grew up in that culture, but we have to go to us, to the students, we have to reach the parents, that's as much as we have to reach the, the youth, and we have to keep everything that's coming out of Albany, that's bringing this trouble out of here. Albany is a very beautiful city. It's one of the most beautiful cities I have been in in my life. This is my home. I will probably die here and be buried in one of the cemeteries here. I, would lie, I love to walk the streets. I love to talk in my garden. We cannot have this, this, this violence in our city. No longer can we continue to wait around and just think the police can do everything and the parents are putting all the responsibilities on the police office when the police don't know what to do. They can't really say what they want to say. Like, mother, can you talk to your son? Mother, can you talk to your daughter? We have to go into these schools. The schools are very important. People don't realize a lot of the problems that we have now started in schools. Most people don't know the Crips and blood started in a high school. Where was the teachers? I'm gonna give everything I can that I know to this committee. It might mean more to me than most people because I'm also a victim. I've lost three brothers, a niece, and over a hundred friends to this violence. So every time violence comes, it touches me deeply. The first thing I can say about this task force, well, we own the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Now, Lieutenant Joe. Thank you, Kelly. Hope everyone's doing well. I first want to say thank you for being appointed to this committee. I've been with the City of Auto Police Department for 20 years now. I was most of my time in patrol. I worked at Arbor Hill, the West Hill neighborhood. I walked the beat on Central Avenue for a few years. I was promoted to sergeant in 2013, lieutenant in 2016, and I currently oversee and supervise the neighborhood engagement unit, which consists of all the B cops that you see out there. I'm biking on foot, community service officers, the prevention service officers, there are the track officers and the SU officers, and the school resource officers. So I am looking forward to working with all of you. I believe in having creative and creating long term solutions to problems and not just putting a band aid on it. So I'm looking forward to everybody's input and I bring my creativity to this committee. Thank you. Thank you, so, Sergeant Thompson. Vince, Vince Thompson. Yeah, uh, that's my old title, actually. Thanks, Kelly. Thank uh, I'm currently with the school district, director of safe schools and violence prevention, which basically boils down to security. I spent uh, more than 26 years in law enforcement, quite a bit of that time with the Albany Police Department. I uh, worked with Joe and Kelly a number of years ago. And uh, from this role in the school side, I certainly see that uh, we have the opportunity to uh, equitably distribute some services. Uh, I worked firsthand with a lot of uh, families that were possibly overwhelmed by services and others that didn't have enough. So we need to uh, get those services to the right people at the right time, uh, certainly. And like many, many of you have said before, Long-standing programs are what we need and uh, strengthen some of the programs that are already in the police department and have the opportunity to work well with the right support and the right connections and especially with the community partners, uh, which I've worked with for a number of years uh, through the neighborhood engagement unit and, and my work there. Uh, so we have the opportunity to reach out and spread that wealth, so to speak, to get the services where they need, keep those long-standing projects going. And if we need to start new ones, go right ahead with that. But we have a lot of ser valuable services already in place. We just need to strengthen them and get them out to the people. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, now uh, any, any public safety committee members care to comment? Uh, no, okay. No. All right, so Kelly, yeah. mm -hmm. I'd just like to thank them all once again, okay? And uh, offering everything that they have. There's a wide variety of talents here. And uh, if there's anything our committee can do, I'm willing to help out on. Thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Ballerin. I just wanted to echo those sentiments. Uh, we're very appreciative of all of you who are willing to 
volunteer your time and, and, and take this task on. Uh, we were very lucky to have such a array of individuals from different backgrounds, different perspectives to come together uh, and really take a holistic approach of how we can try to address this issue in our city. So uh, we're going to work with you in any way that we can. Uh, and thank you again. Kelly? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, as a member of the committee also, I just want to thank you. And uh, I really think, uh, you know, we, we interviewed so many people and you were standouts. And thank you for agreeing to serve. Thank you. Mr. Conti. Um, echo everything everyone has said. Um, I was just wondering what is um, a timeline as far as uh, meeting and uh, uh, beginning the process, or if that's been thought yet. I just sent a meeting request for January 14th for the Thursday. Um, we were discussing in the committee the second um, week of January. So I just sent that out. Okay. Yes. And those meetings will be open public meetings? Yes. And streamed yes, they, as well? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, they will be. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the idea is to, to get going and have that initial meeting. Uh, again, uh, um, I'm, uh, as a part of public safety, I'll be on and Ms. Frederick will be on the committee, but the idea is to set this thing up and be a part of the conversation, but uh, you folks, uh, diverse background, obviously folks that care, y'all have uh, various skill sets that are, are gonna help this process. And uh, we'll, I, I plan on you know, being there, being a part of the process and, and watching it grow and, and, and watch us develop ideas uh, for, for how to, to stem the, uh, this, this violence and, uh, and, and, and do, you know, make some lasting change. Uh, I, I really look forward to it. It's, it's, it's long overdue. Um, Mr. Anani, did you have your hand up, buddy? Yes. Um, first, I just want to echo the sentiment of my colleagues. Thank you so much for putting your hat in. Um, this is something that is a disease that is plaguing our city. Um, and we cannot continue to go forward this way. Um, you know, my years of being in a council or just working in government, one of the things I've noticed is that there's no sense of urgency in government. Any, everything could be, you know, let's take care of it another time. Let's, you know, let's deal with it another time. Let's wait for this. Let's just kicking the can down the road. So I just want to uh, let you know that if uh, things are moving slower than you expect, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. If there's legislation that you want to put forward, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, don't wait on two to three years uh, to, you know, uh, come up with a recommendation. So if there's something that could be addressed today, uh, let's address it today. If there's something that could be addressed three months, let's address that. So I just want to thank you all so much for, um, you know, putting your hat to uh, cure this disease that's plaguing our city. And I just want to thank you all for the work that you're doing. And uh, Mr. Donald, I'm not sure if you've been to Brooklyn, but uh, it's a great place I hear to visit too. But thank you all so much. So uh, thank you, thank you all. Um, and uh, if no one else has anything, uh, we'll close out uh, the caucus. Mr. Hoey. You're muted, Mr. Hoey. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm really concerned about some of the stuff we talked about earlier. Um, I wanna know, number one, what's racist about our flag, okay? If somebody told me something about the color orange, uh, you know, the Irish flag has orange in it because when Ireland was trying to be put together, there was people, who, Protestants who had come in from the Netherlands and settled there. And the Irish said they wanted to be inclusive and they decided to put that color in there. So I don't know if the color orange is. And the second problem I have is my two stepchildren are Stortzes. Their last name is S-T-A-A-T-S. They immigrated to this country back in 1680. So because they were Dutch, they didn't own slaves. Are we saying that they're racist because the you know city of Albany was founded by the Dutch? The island of Manhattan was born, was bought by the Dutch. Okay, so I do have a lot of concerns. And my big concern is we're facing a financial difficulty and the amount of money, you know, has anybody even looked into how much it would cost to change all our flags, to change all our symbols? I don't see them as being overtly racist. 
but I'm not an expert. And I'm, I, I think it's due to discussion. I did reach out to the Mohican Nation. I told them about that, you know, there's talk of taking their symbol on our seal off. And I want to see what they say. I see if they agree with it or not. I know there's a big controversy going on about exit three. You know, these are the original people in this land or nation or whatever you want to call it. And to just like push them away and throw away that 400 year history, I just don't understand it. So, and again, it's, I need to be educated maybe, but I just, you know, this, like we have to do it now in the middle of a financial crisis. I, I just don't agree with it. And I, I got to get that out there because I am upset about it. You know, I, I just think this is the wrong time. You know, we have people dying left and right with COVID. The rates are, are phenomenal. We have people shooting each other. I mean, we have a lot of problems and we're going to, you know, is changing a flag, changing a seal really going to make a difference? I, I don't know. Thank you. So yeah, that's a uh, subject of to further discussion that we can discuss in the committee. But Mr. Anani, I see you got your hand up. Yeah, um, you know, I just wanted to respond to the previous uh, comments. I, again, uh, you know, like you said, you're not an expert, right? And this is going to go to committee and we all can learn um, from uh, some of the sentiments that uh, certain demographics in the city are sharing with uh, council members. So, you know, uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, a thoughtful discussion when it goes to committee. But I will say that I know the mayor is already making strides uh, to, uh, you know, as it relates to the sale of the city to make it more inclusive, make individuals feel like there's a sense of pride. So it, like uh, Kelly said, it's gonna go to committee. We'll have further discussion. I'll get all the facts and I hope you too, you, you also do. Mr. Ballard and then Mr. Conti. Thank you. Um, I just want to get the, my point, I haven't had an opportunity to read the foreclosure resolution. Um, I do understand the, the, the focus behind it. It's right to take properties that have been abandoned and have become a, uh, uh, a nuisance to many of our neighborhoods. So I understand the heart behind it. I just want to make sure that it doesn't uh, misguidingly affect some of our vulnerable populations, especially at this time where we're seeing a lot of um, a lot of a lot of uh, difficulty uh, out there uh, for many of our residents because of the pandemic, because of jobs loss and, and income loss. So um, I I just want to make sure I make 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 you aware of that. I'm not, if if I have any concerns after I read the legislation, I'll I'll let you know about that, uh, uh, Kelly. I, 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 so I just don't want to make it seem like I throw a monkey wrench at you uh, on Sunday or, or Monday. Um, I just want to make sure that it's something where we we take that into consideration, um, and we don't you know, we we do something that's positive to take to deal with these abandoned properties, but not in a situation where we take someone from their home faster than we would have, um, be, you know, who's still living there, that's still occupied. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellin. Mr. Conti. Yeah, um, quick question, and just one note, the, I just want to the city seal, by the way, it's set in city code, uh, the design description or whatever. So any change to the city seal has to come through the council through an amendment to city code. I'm not sure if it would be subject to referendum, but my other question was, um, I, I think there was some discussion at the last meeting or caucus or whatever about snow removal issues. And I was unclear as to how we ended that, whether there was gonna be some discussion uh, through the general services committee uh, with the uh, commissioner, um, not critical of the work, whatever, but just you know some issues that have come up that I think we need to uh, you know, raised uh, in fairness from our constituents. And Mike, if uh, whatever the process is, want to clarify. Yeah, I was, I had, uh, I had spoken with Kelly and my suggestion was to have them come in in front of the whole caucus. Whichever way, I just wanted to know. I think way. that's, usually we get more participation. Right. And uh, Michelle said she did send a note out to DGS, right? Michelle? Yes, for the 13th yeah. at 530. Uh, you're waiting to hear waiting. back from them, but but my understanding, it was going to be entertained in front of a caucus. That's Correct. fine. That to get greater participation. Yes. Okay. Did we have a date on that then? 
January no. 13th. No. January 13th. 13th, okay. January 13th. Oh, oh January 13th? Correct. Okay. It's not been settled yet, but that's the date that you've reached yes. out to them. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. Okay, um, if there's nothing further, um, I want to close out the meeting. It's our last uh, meeting of the year. So, I mean, it's just the caucus, but again, uh, 2020 has been a year uh, to, the remem to remember. I'm hoping that uh, 2021 brings uh, greater uh, joy and, and, and success. Um, again, uh, there's hope on the horizon. We have the vaccine. Uh, that's that's going to help someone, but it's still going to take some time for us to get back to normal. Uh, so in that time, I, I'd ask everyone to be safe and, and practice social distancing, wear your mask, uh, because you, it, you, it's, it's a serious disease and we've lost a lot of Americans uh, to it. So um, if- Thank you, Kelly. Just, okay, so- I'd just like to uh, say uh, Happy New Year, everybody, and uh, I'll pray for uh, the health of everybody and the safety of us all. Thank you very much. New Year. Yes. Happy Thank New you, Year. Joe. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Better New Year. Yes. Happy New That's Year. Right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hope springs New Year. eternal. Happy New Year, Tom. Happy New Year, Derek. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year to everyone except for Kelly. Yeah. Don't go anywhere, right? Right, maybe Alfredo too. With, with, uh, Actually, Richard, Richard. Are we shutting down the live?